Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So I get asked constantly, what supplies do I use? What is my list? I don't really have a list per se, because um, I'm always changing things up uh, as I go, but I do generally have a basic set of supplies that I use. So in this video going forward, I'm gonna show you all the supplies that I generally use throughout my videos and my Patreon videos. And of course I add things here and there, but people were asking, so I figured, this is the video for that. So I'm gonna show you all the supplies, the paper, the paint, the brushes, and maybe a sketchbook or two that I use um, in my everyday painting and my tutorials. And usually they're all in my supply list in my shop on Amazon. If they're not, it's because you can't get them like <laughs> in Amazon, like this wonderful palette that I get, that I have from Sylvan Clayworks. Um, they're a company based in Tennessee. This was a gift and they're, barely in, they're really not inexpensive, they're expensive. So um, it's a ceramic palette. They start in like the 100s or like the $80 and up. Um, so they're not cheap, but they're fantastic. So if you were looking for a really nice gift from someone to give you, that's a perfect one. So let's get into the video of all the supplies that I use on a daily basis. And if you have any questions in the comment section, um, yeah, like like I said, it's always ever changing. And these are the ones that I use. Every artist has their own preference for a reason. It's kind of what they've been shown or they like, gravitate towards. I gravitate towards Holbein paints because I love the vibrancy of the colors. Um, I loved their gouache. I still use their gouache. It was my go-to for like 20 something years. So naturally I went into their watercolor. I mean, I've tried Windsor Newton gouache and watercolor and some other brands. It's just where I go. I go right into the whole line. It's my thing. So let's get into the video about all the supplies that I use on a daily basis. So let's start with paint, okay? We're gonna start with Holbein, and I love Holbein, like I said, for the vibrancy of color. Main colors that I use, Cadmium Yellow Deep, Cadmium Red Light, Quinacridone Magenta. I use Bright Rose. For the blues, I use Peacock Blue. Prussian blue, ultramarine deep. Uh, every now and then I throw in a cobalt. That's, this, these are side ones <laughs> that I throw in every now and then. And then this burnt umber. And that's a nice brown that I use. And I've also been using a lot of burnt sienna lately. Every now and then I throw in a raw sienna. And the new color that I've added this year is pyro red. I'm oh, sorry, it's pyro rubin. And I always use, always use gouache white gouache. I use the permanent white. They have permanent white, titanium white. And I mentioned, I forgot to mention, I use Payne's gray a lot as well. Um, these are the colors that I use. They're all on the Amazon shop. And um, I play around with all these. These are the ones. And every now and then I'll add in a little, this one's got no cover to it. Maybe a br brilliant orange, right? This one's called Verdier Blue. Um, gold paint so used up um, yellow ochre <laughs> uh, in the springtime I'll add in some lilac so you know that's what I do yes this is the main ones and if I was going to say if you're just starting out and you couldn't afford much the colors that you definitely need to have and I'm going to eliminate other ones you don't need okay I would say you need a Prussian blue because you need yellow blue and red right yellow blue Cadmium Yellow Deep, Prussian Blue, Quinacridone Magenta. These three, and then you would need like a Paints Gray. These three can make every single color, right? And then a Paints Gray, because it's almost like black, you can't really make black. It's very difficult to make black. And then you'd add in gouache. So if you're on a budget, these are the go-tos, right there, right? Cadmium Yellow Deep, Quinacridone Magenta, Prussian Blue, Paints Gray, and a gouache. Really, you can just experiment with these colors because these guys are going to make a million greens, right? <laughs> then you add a little red and change the green again. This, these two colors make red and blush and all kinds of other colors, right? This color, magenta and Prussian blue, make great purples. So that's it, really. And all three together combined make brown, right? And you've added paints gray, boom. That is all you need, really. Try and play with just these colors. I bet you can make a million colors with it. So those are my colors. Those are my go-to colors that I use every day. Um, like I said, I add a few other ones in here. 
And why do I not have McGreens? Well, I've, I've used greens in the past. I've used olive green and I've had this one, Viridian Hue. It's just, it looks kind of fake. If you want a bright color, greens should look natural. So those are my colors, my go-to. Um, the palette I use, I'm oh, sorry, is that Sylvan Clayworks palette. I also have a link to this other palette right here. This is a, this is one I bring with me when I'm, my, when I'm on my retreats and my workshops. It's a really lightweight aluminum palette. Um, I made the big mistake, look how dirty this is, by putting a, kind of like a rainbow and then putting all the blues together. This is why I really don't always do that on this palette because you don't know where what, what blue is what because it's so dark you can't tell. And I'm always like, oh no, and I dipped it in the wrong one. So maybe if you space a brown in between the palette, then you would know. The reds obviously look you know, different, but the blues kind of end up looking the same and kind of it's a Prussian blue can look like paints gray. So I don't suggest putting them all together like that. Some people might do that and they know exactly where they are because they memorized it. For me, nope, not gonna do that. And the only other palette I have is my travel one, just an inexpensive one that I found on Amazon. Um, it's great, folds up. And I, I really like this. So it has like a little thing you can hold here in you your fingers, but I don't usually use that. But this is perfect. This is all you need. And you take the tube paints and you put it in the little, the little uh, palette holders here. And uh, yeah, that's it. And I use tube paints over pan paints because you can make the color looser faster. You get some nice granulated washes. You just can't really get that on the cake pan paint paints. It's just not the same. So we're gonna move on to brushes. For brushes, I use Princeton brushes because I love the quality. They're inexpensive. They're uh, synthetic, so they're not cruel to animals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The real um, brushes, like a Skoda, that I, they, you know, they use squirrel hair. They're it's kind of like animal cruelty, in my opinion. So, and they're also very, very expensive. So I like the quality of Princeton. So if you screw the brushes up, they're not that expensive. You can buy new ones, and you'll see this different series that I use. This is the uh, Neptune series. I use this number twelve a lot. It's nice and loose and floppy to make beautiful flower petals, etc. Nice washes for skies. This is what I use. Why do I have tape here? Someone asked the other day because someone, if someone borrows this at a workshop or retreat, I actually get to get it back because <laughs> they know it's mine. Um, I use the 12 a lot, but I do have a 10. And in the Velvet Touch series, I use this, uh, they call it a half inch oval, but we call it a cat's tongue brush. Makes great sunflower petals and great leaves. I also use all the time, which you hear me say, the Velvet Touch series. I use the number eight a lot for just nice little branches, little skinny marks. Um, it's great. And I have a number 10 round in the Velvet Touch series, which I use infrequently, but I use it. And I just got this new number four just in case I want to use something so tiny, but I never really use it. It's just really funny. It's a small detail. Um, they have an Aqua Elite series, which is nice. It's kind of like in between the two of these. I have a 12, which I used. Um, and then they have an oval. I haven't really used it. It's kind of similar to the cat's tongue, in my opinion. It's similar. Just one's a little more stiffer. So the Velvet Touch series is a little stiffer than the Neptune series. Really kind of loose and floppy. This has more control. It's a little stiffer, not as loose. So you have more control in the brush. And same thing with the Aqua Elite. Stiffer, more control. Um, I love the Aqua Elite travel brushes. They come like this. This is a set I got. Um, this is so light and like aluminum. So I use the travel brushes for Aqualite, which are great. Um, I wish they had an eight, but it's like a 12. Uh, I think it's, well, actually, is it an eight? I don't know. I think it's a 12, six, four, and a two. Yeah, they don't have an eight. Something in between would be nice, but whatever. Um, also, other brushes I use to make like peony leaves. This is a, uh, a filbert brush. It's from Grumbacker, six. Princeton makes one in the uh, select series, which is kind of like a craft series, really inexpensive. You get in Michaels or Hobby Lobby, whatever. I don't know if actually does, I don't know, maybe Hobby Lobby doesn't sell it. Michaels does, um, number 16. So I make these great peony leaf petals with this. My other go-to is just a cheap craft wash, one, one inch brush. You can get these anywhere. I got this forever ago, I don't know where. I got this cheap one right here on Amazon. Um, I do use one here and there from Princeton, that's a Velvet Show series. But why spend the money if you don't have to? That's three-fourths inch. And that's the go-to for brushes. Aren't they lovely? 
and that's what I use. <laughs> now let's get into my paper. I use this paper like a thousand million times. <laughs> I don't know if it doesn't make any sense to say that, but I use this all the time on my YouTube channel. This is the Arsh paper, 100% cotton, and it's the pad. It's the loose pad because it's inexpensive. You know, I can break this up for cards, etc. Um, you can get this $19 on Amazon, about $15 at Hobby Lobby. It's not a block. I have a block right here. The blocks are very expensive because they're glued down here, but they're great if you're doing super wet on wet um, and you want the paper to dry flat. The blocks are great, but the blocks, if you're doing a large size, it's not going to make sense. You'd have to stretch that paper. There, There's some videos on YouTube on how to stretch watercolor paper. I'm not going to do one, but you can find the video on how to stretch it. Basically, you're wetting the paper on both sides, and you're wiping it off, and then you like, dry flat, and then it turns stretched. So when you go to paint on it, it won't buckle as much. Um, so I use that. That's cold press paper. Um, it's a really great paper for all my wet on wet. For some hot press paper for Arch, I have this one here. Um, I like hot press too, besides um, lovely cold press. It's fun to play with both papers. And what's the difference between the two? Is that the cold press is going to um, soak in that paint. It's going to be great for all your graded washes and beautiful skies. You're not going to get that kind of attitude on hot press. You're going to use hot press for more stylized kind of paintings. Um, I use it for ink and wash, etc. I wouldn't do a sky on a hot press. It's not the same. You're going to have hard edges. The paint sits on top of the hot press and the seeps in in the cold press. So one of my other favorite hot press papers is from Stonehenge. Uh, excuse me, not Stonehenge. Legion paper. It's the Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press. It's a nice bright white and is very inexpensive. And so, like I said, it's just going to be one of those papers where the paint just sits on top, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's some other brands that I've used, but I like this for just inexpensive quality. Um, I use this other one from Artistro, excuse me, from Fabiano. This is their cold press, this is 100% cotton. This is mid-range, this is in their 20, this is almost $30 for this. If they have a special, grab it on Amazon. Um, but I love it because it's bright white. So the if you notice, um, grab my Arsh paper here. The color is a little, not as bright as this, see? It's a little off, a little creamier. Um, the Fabiano has the same thing, that's natural white, and then they have the bright white. And I love the bright white, especially for like, I don't know if you were doing bright flowers or, or something that was for like the holidays. I just like the bright white. Another amazing cold press paper is Bohang. Bohang, um, they have student grade and they have professional grade. I think this may, I can't tell if this is student grade or not. They're two different color greens. It doesn't matter. I think they're both amazing. Um, they give you actually one of these uh, hot and cold press block openers. So you basically go in here and you remove the paper with this tool, which is great. Um, for removing. And this, this, this particular paper, the tooth on it is even thicker than the R. See the tooth on that? So you really get this wonderful green texture. And if you're doing some gradient washes in here, gorgeous. Like the two, the best paper on the planet for something like that that's really unique um, for washes. So that's the paper that I love. Other miscellaneous things that I use are a fountain pen right here, inexpensive. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, I have a link in the description box. The ink that I put in this is Noodler's ink. Um, it's waterproof so that i'm sorry so that when you're painting over it doesn't bleed um, of course a spray bottle gotta have one of these the masking fluid i use is pbo drawing gum i recently bought the pen i don't know where it is i can't find it but um, really inexpensive on my amazon shop the sharpie fine point ultra pen a mechanical pencil <laughs> or sometimes i've used the number two h pencil i used to use this a lot in my old design days uh, a white gel pen, things like that. Um, the rubber stamp pickup for the lovely masking fluid. It's easier to pick it up. Um, sea sponges. These are great. You can get these at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Sea sponges. You can play with some inks. Um, I've been using, I've tried some of the Dr. Martin pH inks in many different colors. I can't give you a set color, so I just play with whatever colors that reach, you know, I'm drawn to. 
I've used um, the Liquitex ac acrylic inks. Those are just mis miscellaneous things. And another thing I found if you're traveling, these are great to travel. These traveling water cups, they fold down, they go like that. I think I have them in my Amazon shop. They're like two, it's two for like $8. Um, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. If I can think of anything else. Oh, and one brush I forgot that I've used every now and then for a big painting. This is another, again, just a simple two inch flat wash brush. You can get any size. And I found my PBO, I'll just use this. So if you wanna use like this as a pen as opposed to the painting the this stuff on, this you'd use for a really large area. This would use for a small area. You know, maybe have more control with the pen, um, et cetera, et cetera. Those are my go-tos. And yeah, and then like I talked about, I'll talk about for um, uh, sketchbooks, like they're gonna change throughout the time. I'm gonna keep finding new ones. I've been using this one in Europe. Look how dirty it is. <laughs> it's too much. It's from, uh, what is the name of here? Tumarta? Or, I don't know, it's a weird name. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> here it is. Yes, this name. Tumarta. I like it. It's pretty good. It has a nice like canvas cover, and uh, I like the thickness of the paper. That's my sketches that I've done it's in Spain, yeah. and this in Italy. So I like the thickness of this. You notice this from my uh, Instagram. I added some snow with the. You can use all kinds of stuff on the stories and play with this. And I see. I painted this. I scanned it in my computer, and I added some Christmas elements to it. So. If you know how to do things like that, it's fun. So this paint, this sketchbook was a great one. Uh, I felt like it holds the paint well and it's thick and not too much of a pain and you can just take the elastic and close it up. And that is that. So that's it. Those are all my supplies that I use for every day. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments, please, you know, questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. And yeah, that's my go-to and I kind of will revise my little go-to as I go along, but pretty much the link should be in the description box below. It says shop at my supplies on Amazon. I get a small commission if you buy anything there. Um, other than that, um, like I said, I bought the palette at Sylvan Clayworks and things I might find at maybe Jerry's Autorama or Dick Blick. So have a fantastic day and I hope this was helpful and take care and I'll speak to you soon.